Hi, I'm Michael Harlan Turkel, and I'm a vinegar expert. I'm going for a fourth. I love this so much. All right, we have two white wine vinegars here, and white wine vinegar should primarily, if not only, be made of grapes and or wine, whereas white distilled vinegars can be made of any alcohol, ethanol, maybe even petroleum. It is completely devoid of character, flavor, any kind of inherent value. You know, use that to clean, don't use that to cook with. I'm gonna start with bottle A over here, which is certainly a deeper golden hue, almost looks like, you know, an aged wine per se. And it has maybe a slight viscosity to it, even though you see the air bubble on the top moves around when you move the bottle, and it doesn't have any particulates in it. And by that, I mean there's nothing in the liquid itself that looks like, uh, for lack of a better word, schmutz or sediment. The more sediment you have in the vinegar, the more off flavors you could potentially have once it's open. So I'm gonna pour it in this bowl just a wee bit, and not too much because it's a strong thing. Vinegar itself is a culinary acid, four to six, maybe 7% acidity within an aqueous solution, which is water. Okay, so this is vinegar A, and I'm gonna give it a little whiff, maybe waft it towards your nose. Yep, that's enough, definitely. It's a very powerful one, but it has a hint of sweetness, which is really nice. All right, we're gonna take a look at vinegar B. It has a nice clarity to it. There's no sediment. It has a really nice kind of pale yellow tending towards the green spectrum of a hue. I'm gonna pour it out into the bowl right here. Wow, that's interesting. Vinegar B is much paler, much less color. It's almost transparent around the edges. This is a little more savory. This smells like a very specific type of wine, maybe something from a northern region that has higher altitudes. You can actually pick up those notes in vinegar as you would wine. All right, let's taste the power of sour. This is vinegar A, and right here I have a plastic spoon. It's because I actually think plastic, if not ceramic, end up being better tasting vessels for vinegar. Metal, if it's not stainless steel has almost a flavor or sensation in your mouth whereas these are pretty neutral so i'm going to dip just a little bit in oh this is delicious it does have that little bit of sweetness at the end and that's my second taste Ooh, i did a little spill this is when the taste comes in and it's extremely high quality all right let's taste vinegar b I want to see a little bit of the viscosity if there is any. I like dripping it off my spoon because it looks cool. But also uh, to see whether or not there's any change in that turbidity. It opens up and has like this nice bouquet, like wildflower. You know, a tinge of sweetness, almost like honey. It definitely has these base notes that are so deep and vegetal and savory, I love it. All right, I think I'm ready to make a discerning choice. And this is white wine vinegar. So I actually think the one that's more potently white wine ends up being more expensive. Like it's been aged, like it has some vintage. The younger the white wine vinegar, the less complexity it has, and the same goes with wines. And that has to do a little bit with industrial versus older methods of making vinegars. It shows if you go through these longer processes, it doesn't strip a vinegar of nuance and character, which could happen if you make a vinegar too quickly. Whereas I think a lot of the better white wine vinegars take anywhere between six months to a year, if not longer to make. All right, I think I know which one might be more expensive. I think it might be B because it has this complexity. Let's give this a shot. 95, 213, oh, wow. So the anxiety has gone for white wine vinegar a little bit. This is almost double the price. And I really think they're both great vinegars for what they are. So when you're shopping for white wine vinegar, look for that golden hue that usually connotes that there's some age to it, which is a good thing. You should be able to smell something pleasant rather than just something hit you and it feel just acidic. There should be some wonderful underlying flavors that express themselves once they open up and hit your palate.
It's apple cider vinegar time. ACV, as they say in the biz, might be a little bit of a misnomer. The difference between apple juice and apple cider is that apple cider has all these particulates in it and apple juice has been strained. I think you get a lot more off flavors from something that hasn't been strained. You want clarity because that creates clarity of flavor. So in my mind, the best apple cider vinegars come from apple juices and not necessarily ciders. And a lot of apple cider vinegars use concentrates or pumice from other parts of the apple food processing business. So they're extracting flavors from those things and often there's sediment left behind. So you do want clarity in a bottle. Apple cider vinegar A. It's beautiful, it's clear, it has this golden hue. Let's pour it out into the bowl. There are no particulates in there. There is a separation of color. And I actually think that's a good thing because often with apple cider vinegars, they can be really, really deep hued. Usually means that they've extracted from a concentrate or a pumice, which are the leftover pieces of apple that happen after juice is pressed. It seems to be very popular to do that a shot of apple cider vinegar in the morning as something to do with microbial gut health. Apple cider vinegars on the market these days say live or wisp mother or live acetobacter, and that means it hasn't been pasteurized. I urge you to look for live acetobacter on the label because that's the stuff that has good microbial gut health. Once it's pasteurized, it loses all those live cultures that add any kind of health or benefit to doing that shot. All right, vinegar B. This is a little cloudy, not quite murky because there aren't sediments floating about. I try to strain all my ciders before making them or look for a bottle that has a lot of clarity to it. That said, this could also be a great vinegar. It just might be more about acid than flavor. It looks a little lighter, a yellow or a tan, which leads me to believe that it hasn't extracted all the color it could have from the apple it was made from. All right, let's taste these vinegars. Oh, it's got nice acidity. That tanginess like you'd get from crunching into a Granny Smith, but also that Forest Four, that more autumnal flavor that you get from maybe the heirloom varieties that are drier. You see that a lot in cider right now. A lot of single varieties, a lot of heirloom varieties. Apples, you need to round out that apple juice because there are dry apples, there are tart apples. First one for acidity. Definitely got it. This is actually a pretty acidic. There's not as much body around it, so you really just get like hit with acid and not much flavor. Oh yeah, this is opening things up. Whew, this is gonna be a harsh thing to take a shot of in the morning. I think vinegar A is a lot more nuanced. Vinegar B is a lot more assertive. All right, if I had to guess, I would say that A is the more expensive one. So let's see if I'm right. 19, 150. A is the more expensive vinegar. You know, I thought so for a couple reasons. It wasn't as compact, it was a little broader on my palate, and it wasn't all about the acid, whereas B has that more concentrated apple flavor. I just think this has a lot more flavor, and this has a lot more maybe pickling culinary use. All right, we got two samples of balsamic vinegar, which I think is the most ubiquitous vinegar in the world, but it is quite an outlier in my mind, because whereas most other vinegars are made of fruit juice, made into a wine. Balsamic vinegar is the boiled down grape must or juice from Trebbiano grapes, the same as what's made to make Lambrusco wine and then ferment it. Let's take a look at vinegar A. It's, it's pretty fluid in the bottle. It's not that syrupy. There's a little bit of bubble nucleation at the top. That's just the bubble foaming and attaching to the top of the bottle. Sometimes it means that it's a pretty thick and viscous liquid and that those have a lot of structure to them. So that's why they don't deflate or pop. Balsamic vinegar was something that should have never made it to America. Uh, it only got here in the 70s, but before that, most of Italy didn't know what balsamic vinegar was outside of that Emilia Romagna region. And that's because it was something that was only for a familiar set. Mothers made it for their daughters when they were born to be given as a dowry during their wedding. So we're gonna pour a little bit of balsamic A into a bowl. We're gonna look at this viscosity as it pours. Oh, it's a little loose. And that could be one of two things. It's the amount that it was reduced down when it was initially boiled, or it's the amount that is reduced down over time. So there are really two types of balsamic vinegar. There is IGP and DOP. And IGP is the more industrial, it means indication of geographical protection. And that means it can be made within a certain region, but 
often has industrial practices. The other is DOP, which is a way of designating an origin or way that it's traditionally been made. And that is what we also know as traditionale. The traditionale or DOP was made the way that's been made through generations. IGP was started because they had to keep up with demand. So this one does have the acidity at the forefront, but then in the background, it is all that darker fruit, that stewed fruit. Let's take a look at balsamic vinegar B. Very dark in the bottle, as all balsamic should be. Much thicker, a lot of viscosity there. You see a lot less bubbles around the neck because I think the weight of whatever's in here is weighing those down and popping those bubbles. Probably a much more aged or at least reduced balsamic vinegar. You definitely get the acidity on first whiff. Such really great dried fruit. There's a lot going on with this one. All right, let's taste these vinegars. So a little bit to introduce to the palate. You pick up a little bit of the fruit, but not much. This is kind of nice how it falls off your palate so quickly because balsamic, if it's too strong, it just becomes the most omnipresent thing in your mouth. Look at that syrup. Look at that pour off the spoon. I almost taste like really ripe orchard fruit. Something really juicy. Oh, it's a really beautiful example of balsamic vinegar. All right, I think I'm ready to give it a guess. I'm gonna have to say that this is the more expensive one. Vinegar B. Vinegar A is four bucks and 69. Yep, that's a lot more expensive like a lot more expensive, but it shows, it really does. If this is traditionale, they only sell them in 100 milliliters at a time. It's, it's part of the way that balsamic is regulated by the consortium. So that would probably be around a $250 bottle. Every drop is somewhere around 50 cents, maybe even less than that, a quarter. So for the impact it gives, I totally think it's worth it. Whereas this one, also a very nice vinegar, especially for the price. To use in applications, you would apply heat to. This is for like ice cream, this is for panna cotta, strawberries. Do not apply any heat to this one. It's probably been aged anywhere, if this is traditionale, anywhere between 12 and 25 plus years to a series of barrels. So it's been perfectly cooked by patience and time. Okay, I'm ready to taste some rice vinegars now. There's a wide spectrum of rice vinegars, but I'm gonna start with vinegar A. Vinegar A is pretty clear, maybe a very pale yellow color to it. There's not much floating around, so it's definitely something that's been strained or clarified. Let's give this a little pour and we'll smell it. All vinegars are made out of some kind of wine. Rice vinegar has a couple different kinds. Uh, the one we know most is likely what we're seeing here is a standard komazu or rice vinegar made of usually a white rice, um, maybe even an amber, polished down to a certain grain, turned into a sake, and then made into a rice vinegar. This one is very clear. That's the hard thing about rice vinegars is when it's seasoned, sometimes it has extra sugar and salt. It's something you're gonna use for your sushi rice, where in Japan, you use a plain rice vinegar and you season it yourself. I don't smell much, I smell acid, a little bit of sweetness, more like vodka than gin with all the botanicals. Let's take a look at vinegar B. It is dark, very dark, but it has this reddish hue, this mahogany, this kind of deep, dark, soy saucy look to it. You know, it's pretty liquidy. This has so much going on. It has such crazy savory notes to it. It almost has this burnt charred caramel thing going on. Let's get to tasting these two vinegars. Vinegar A, the clear rice vinegar. The acid hits you in the back of the throat right away. You know, it spreads across the palate. I am salivating. I'm almost like puckering. It's, it's so sour. Let's taste vinegar B. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I know what this is. This is Akasu, this is red vinegar. It's a really distinct, almost forgotten vinegar from Japan. Once industrialization, refrigeration happened, they didn't need to use this as a preserving agent for fish and for rice. This has so much complexity going on. Flavor profiles from this burnt caramel to these stewed fruits to almost chocolate and coffee. Which one's more expensive? I'm pretty sure I know what this is and I think it's Akasu and this does not exist much in the world. And is such a wonderful specialty item that this is the more expensive one. So hopefully I'm right after all that explanation. So 13 cents versus 136. Yep, this is 
not a bad vinegar. This is a fine vinegar for a lot of things. It's neutral and can be used in place of a lot of vinegars, even though it doesn't have much flavor. It has striking acidity. It is very clean and you can add flavor in afterwards. Whereas this one's so specific, I would maybe braise some pork belly in this. I think it needs a lot of fat and a lot of flavor. So when shopping for rice vinegar, you want one that's actually made of rice wine, which is sake. You don't want one of the others that are adding some kind of sweetness element or some kind of alcohol element and diluting what the journey from wine to vinegar really is. I really hope that people use more vinegar in their everyday life. If you buy a good vinegar, cherish it, keep it in your fridge once you open it so it lasts longer, but use it, use it often with as many people around you as possible so they know the power and potency of good vinegar. A little bet goes a long way.